Hey, Mama, real quick. Happy Mother's Day. I am so happy you're here. Hey, if you're struggling with self-care right now, I get it. (laughs) I am too, and I'm a self-care coach. However, I'm still offering and will continue to offer at the introductory rate my self-care coaching opportunity. I'm going to help you create a simple and sustainable self-care routine, not only for now, but into the future when we're back to normal, if there is such a thing as normal, in order to put yourself first and to feel your best. So I'll take you through my proven three-tier self-care coaching system. We'll dig in and habit stack on the things that you're already doing every Every day and establish a new routine for you that's going to help you show up better than before. I get it. I was tired of being overwhelmed and stressed and addicted to sugar. That's a whole nother story in itself. And I didn't want to feel that way anymore. And I know other women feel the same way. So check the link in the show notes. Let's get on a quick call together to do a short session for self-care coaching for you. Let's make the time for yourself and remember that self-care isn't selfish. It's necessary. Let's get into today's show. Hey friend, welcome to the self-care isn't selfish podcast. I'm your host, Emily Nichols. As a Whole30 certified coach, wife, busy working boy mom, and your self-care guru, I'm here to help you start putting yourself first without the guilt. Each week, you'll hear motivating and practical tips on how you can create a habit of self-care through interviews with my amazing guests or quick solo episodes with me. After each episode, you'll walk away with an action plan and feel empowered to implement what you have learned into your life. So grab a cup of coffee, glass of wine, or your favorite sparkling water, and let's do this. You're listening to episode 42 of the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. Surprise! I decided to drop a bonus episode this week, the week of Mother's Day, to celebrate and inspire all of the mamas out there listening to this show. And I thought, what better guest to bring on than Lisa Graft of I Am Mother of the Year. Before I introduce you to Lisa, I did want to say a very special Happy Mother's Day to my mom and to my mother-in-law. So to Sherry and Sandy, I love you both very much. You're such great role models for me for how to be a strong mama, both inside and out. And above all, family and love is everything. So thank you for all that you do. I love you both. I also want to recognize that sometimes Mother's Day is a really difficult time for some people. You may be missing your mom or wishing you could be a mom someday. So I know it can be a really emotional day, and I want to recognize that as well. Regardless of where you are in your life, I feel like you can take away a lot of great things from this conversation today with Lisa, and I just wanted to say that I see you and I'm sending you all of my love. So let me tell you a little bit about my guest today, Lisa Graft. We're talking all things self-care and motherhood, and I thought she was the perfect person to bring on. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Lisa, she is an emotional, creative, insightful, and encouraging storyteller. So she's a radio co-host on Radio Theology on 99.5 ZPL and Indy. I usually hear her chatting away Sunday mornings when we're driving to church. Um, Plus, she's also a writer, a speaker, a dreamer, and a doer. So she's the founder of the Mama Movement, I am Mother of the Year.com. She's building a tribe of moms who are encouraged, celebrated, and committed to helping other mothers feel the same way through random acts of kindness, vulnerability, and weekly content that captures the hilarity and honesty of motherhood. She's passionate about encouraging women into healthier relationships with themselves and others through authenticity, self-care, and grace while walking alongside them to help uncover the truth and live out their true identities. So this is a big chunk of what we're going to be talking about today. I know motherhood can be 
really, really challenging. And finding time for yourself, especially through this time we're going through right now with the pandemic, can be really, really challenging. You know, when I talk to my community, the hardest thing for them sometimes about self-care is actually putting themselves first. They feel like they need to put their spouse and children first always. And that's probably not the healthiest way to live out your life. So Lisa and I talk about that a lot today. And she has plenty of inspiration to give just from her own real life and ridiculous stories. We laugh a lot. Um, She's been married to her husband, Brian, for 10 years and has two kiddos, Josie, who's five, and Cal, who's two. So sit back and relax. Enjoy this conversation with Lisa Graft of I Am Mother of the Year Make sure, as always, to stick around to the end of the episode. I'm going to share my three biggest takeaways to help inspire you, Mama, to put yourself first without the guilt. So let's go. All right, gang. Thanks again for tuning in to the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I'm so excited to have this conversation with Lisa Graff today of I Am Mother of the Year. Lisa, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's so fun. Awesome. We're both sitting in our closets, very real <laughs> life, mom life right now. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> I can hey. barely hear boss baby through the wall oh. that my daughter's watching. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, Lisa, I start off every podcast interview with the same question. I'm going to start with you with the same question. What does self-care mean to you? Self-care means for me, two different things. I kind of put self-care into two different buckets. So one is like the quick fix self-care, which is your bubble baths, you know, the runs, the, you know, morning at the gym, whatever it is, the hot cup of coffee in the quiet, dark home, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, And then there's like the soul deep self-care. And so that's really um, doing the hard work so that you can create a life that you don't have to escape from. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You don't want to escape from your own life. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Now, lots of us do at some point and quarantine is not making it any easier, but, um, but it it takes the hard work and that's why people don't like to think of it as self-care because you're like, self-care should be just all fun and games, but really it's not. (laughs) No, not all. Like you said, it's a lot of the deep stuff that really makes you, you know, appreciate your life even when it does get hard. Right. Exactly. You can handle it. So, well, let's talk about you a little bit. I love what you've done in the community that you've built. So can you tell us all a little bit about yourself and where you got to where you are now? Yeah, I have been married to my husband for 10 years. We've got a five and a half year old daughter named Josie and an almost three year old named Calvin. And I um, have bounced around in a bunch of different jobs, but Um, the theme of my life has been that I'm a storyteller. And so that's how I love introducing myself as I am a, an emotional, creative, insightful, encouraging storyteller. And so that's like my sentence. If you're going to define me as a person, that's it. And you'll probably see all of those things today. Maybe not the emotions part. Um, well, you never know. I like to cry. I cry all the time. <laughs> Same. Yeah. So, um, but I, I've had a, a career in radio and still co-host a radio show called Radio Theology, which is on ZPL here in Indianapolis. And then um, I'm a writer for all of at Nazarene University. So I work full time, mostly from home, writing for the graduate programs. And then I, on the side... <laughs> <laughs> Do, I, about two and a half years ago, I launched this movement called I Am Mother of the Year. And it started out uh, as something that I didn't know I needed, but I, mm-hmm. I couldn't find it anywhere. And so I'm like, I wonder if there's something to this thing where we just start celebrating each other as moms and celebrating ourselves for the really small things. Because I was in the season where I had a newborn and a two and a half year old and I hated every moment, you know, and I just was like, I could not see anything good. I couldn't, I wasn't celebrating anything and I could just feel myself slipping away and I got scared. And so I thought, you know what, what if I just went like, what if I just tried this? And I didn't expect it to become what it is. 
Um, but it turns out there's a need for women to gather in community and celebrate each other. And so it kind of started with these uh, Mother of the Year Award stickers. So, th and those are still in circulation all around the country now, but they're just random acts of kindness. So you see a mom out and about, right? We've all either been the mom or seen the mom who has, uh, you know, they're either carrying their child out of the store like a screaming surfboard, you know, yep. <laughs> or they're like totally rocking it, you know, and either one makes you stop and go, whoa, okay. I've right. either been there. I want to be there or whatever it is. And so just stopping and encouraging them, giving them the mother of the year award, uh, has been so good. I have so many fun stories from, from those interactions. Uh, but that then that's grown into this Facebook community where, um, I've got more than 4,300 women across the country who are celebrating the small things every day women are posting, um, just all their small victories. Uh, and so that's fun to watch and see grow. And then through that, I, I speak and I write and, um, just really try to equip moms to, um, move from this isolation, fear, all of that, um, self-doubt into community and confidence, peace, freedom, um, and then walk alongside them to discover their true identity. Uh, Cause I think as moms, we kind of, once we become moms, it's easier to go, Oh, well, whatever I didn't get accomplished before motherhood, I'm just going to project that onto my kids. And uh, then they're going to become my identity. I'm going to become Josie's mom and Calvin's mom. And I'm going to disappear. And that's just going to be, that's just the way it is. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> it makes me nothing like it kind of boils my blood, but then it also like pains my heart. And so I, I know I'm speaking into the right spot going, no, like we were created to, to live and teach our children how to live by their, them watching us, not them telling us how they should be living. Yeah. There's so much to unpack there, Lisa. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So let's start with this. Cause my, my boys, I have two boys, they're 12 and eight. And I totally relate to what you were saying when you, um, your kids were super duper little, like I felt like I lost myself for a while too. I was just their mom. That was who I was. I mean, my career and everything, oh, that is going to take a back seat. All my hobbies, you know, I'm going to have to find new hobbies and, oh, wait a minute. Where'd all my friends go? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like my friends right now are like Elmo and Thomas the train and I want to pull my hair out. <laughs> right. Like I shouldn't have every Daniel Tiger song memorized. Oh my God. Sometimes it comes in handy, right? Like, but overall, no, I reject that fully. <laughs> <laughs> I, I reject that hug a mugga from you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't you put that snout on me. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, I so relate to that. And I know I was a mom of a little bit older kids, I feel like I have finally found my tribe of other moms and community, but it took me a long time to build that. Yeah. But going back to kind of what you first said, you know, you started celebrating the small wins and being like, Hey, I am mother of the year. You know, I carried my screaming banshee out of Applebee's. It's fine. It's right. Fine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, Hey, I got everyone in the car and they all have their shoes on, you know, right. praise yeah. Jesus. I did it. I am mother of the year. And I love that, that you're encouraging other women to say that to other women and let them know like, Hey, like, you know, it's just a small random act of kindness, but it can go such a long way. Oh yeah. There's always about, I'm going to say nine out of 10 times that I've ever said that to someone, whether or not I have a sticker on or whatever, it ends in tears and a hug. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've hugged more women in the freezer aisle at Kroger. It, it just, cause it means so much mm -hmm. for somebody to stop in like, enter your world for just a second and say something nice to you. Like, people don't do that anymore. And especially in this culture of motherhood that we're in right now, it feels very judgmental. And so, uh, you know, we're, or it just, it's this unear unobtainable, like Pinterest perfect level of perfection that I'm like, I am not the Pinterest mom. If you are good for you. I have some, some of my best friends are Pinterest moms. And I'm like, nah, that's just, I can't, it's not what I do, you know? And well, so, so I, much pressure. There's so much. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah. And so if somebody, especially another mom, like goes into your moment and says, Hey, you're doing a really great job. If no one tells you today, you're a really great mom. 
Because guess who's not telling them that almost every day? Anybody. No one's telling you that, you know? And so those have been some really, really special moments. That's so meaningful. I love that. Well, we all crave community and connection with people other than the little people living in our homes or your partner. <laughs> or your- right. Yeah. And I feel like that's so hard to do though. Cause you don't, it's almost like going back to dating. You're like at the park and when we could go to the park and being like, Oh, Hey, they got kids that are close to my kid's age. And like, I wonder <laughs> if they think I'm going to, if I'm weird or, you know, or be like, I like your stroller. What brand is that? Or, yeah. you know, you don't want to be awkward, but you, it, you have to put yourself out there to make friends. And I feel like you've done an amazing job just using social media, like with your Facebook group to create that community. Yeah, it helps too. And it helps even just to have a reason to walk over to somebody else, you know? Um, and so that's why I love the stickers too. It's like, you, you're coming up with a purpose instead of trying to be like, oh, hey, you want to be my friend? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Right. I'm so lonely. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, it's so relatable, though, because I feel like we've all been there. Oh, well. yeah. We've all oh, been yeah. there. And, you know, and there's times in your life where your kids do maybe take more of a priority or maybe you don't feel like you're being as good of a friend as you'd like to be because, you know, yeah. you get spit up on you and you've been up for 24 hours straight. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. There's all of these different seasons of motherhood, mm. uh, but it's just, I guess for me, it's just been celebrating each one for what it is, yeah. but then I am, I, and this is where I'm like, I'm not a real mom because I don't look back on seasons and go, Oh, remember when they were babies and Oh, I wish I could just, and maybe that's because I'm, we're still kind of in the throes of like the very physical parenting. Mm -hmm. Um, but like at five and a half and almost three, I'm like, I'm glad like every stage is better than the next one. So I'm yeah. like, I'm going to celebrate this, but I'm like, let's go, you know, but I've yeah. got friends who they cry when they're putting away the, you know, the two T clothes and they're going to the three T, you know? And for me, I'm like, that's not me. And that's okay. But it's, you know, but I'm like, eh. but there's just all of these different seasons that we go through as moms. Um, and some of them are lonelier, you know, sometimes you just can't because it's not like life stops when you have kids either. Your, your right. life continues on. And so lots of other challenges present themselves in the midst of mothering and all of those weigh into how good of friends we can be. Hey gang, cutting in on this conversation real quick to tell you about my friends at The New Primal. I love this company not only because they make Whole30 approved sauces and meat sticks with just clean ingredients, but because of their mission of returning to the table. You know, food really does bring people together and with all of our busy lives, it's hard to sit down to a meal together with your own family and your other loved ones. But the new Primal is really focused on community and bringing people together around food. And why not do that with clean ingredients? I use their classic marinade weekly. Their mustard barbecue is the perfect dipping sauce and their ketchup as well. My kids love all their different spicy buffalo sauces as well. And like I said, their meat sticks are Whole30 approved. So I always have some in my handbag or in my glove compartment in my car if I need a quick emergency snack. So head over to thenewprimal.com and you can use the code EMILYNICHOLS22 to receive 15% off your order. So remember, go to newprimal.com and let us know how you are returning to the table and connecting with others through food and the new primal. Well, and I think it's all about whatever season of life you're in and whatever you're giving, being hard on yourself about is yeah. to in turn, give yourself some grace because yeah. seasons come and go. You may be through going through a very hard season right now. You may be like, Hey, it's not so bad right now. I mean, they can get themselves dressed. That's amazing. And but I don't think we give it ourselves enough grace. And you doing this through your community, I think is maybe a way for women to feel like, maybe I do need to give myself a little more grace because I would never talk this way to a fellow mom. 
Right, exactly. Well, and that's um, where self-care kind of shifts for me is this, um, is the self-talk. Because, I mean, it's, it's either we are so graceful. This is me. I'm so graceful for everyone else, right? Like, oh, I am, I am your most compassionate friend. I will just help you reason it away. I can justify it. I can speak truth. I can do whatever you need me to do. Um, but for myself, if I make one tiny mistake, I'm like, are you the stupidest person in the entire world? And like my self-talk has been terrible. And so, and sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes you're so easy on yourself, but you're really hard on other people. And so, um, it's just, it, but all of it starts inside. It's, it's this internal dialogue, um, that comes from the overflow of your heart. How do you correct that? Ooh, that's good. I am working on that a lot, but I, I have come up with this little process. And so this is what I speak about a lot. So, um, I could talk about this forever and ever, but I, um, I, I went on a journey where I, um, it's been probably two years now. It'll be two years this summer where I, I kind of started realizing, okay, I'm giving myself this, this grace, you know, I'm celebrating the wins. Um, but then I just started noticing that I'm, I'm believing all these lies about myself. And so, um, and that those were the roots of all of these, um, all of the fear, all of the yelling I was doing, all of the anxiety and the stress and, you know, running around trying to please everybody. Like those are all, those behaviors stem from the fear from these lies that I was believing and still do believe. And so I just started paying attention one day to, okay, I'm just going to listen to my brain. Like, what am I actually saying to myself in these bad moments? And so, uh, the, the phrase that came up with that I said all the time, and I said it so much, I wasn't even noticing, but anything that happened, especially in motherhood, I was like, I'm not equipped for this. That's my first automatic thought. And so, and therapists call this automatic negative thoughts. It's a whole thing. But it's like, but that's what, that was the first thought that pops into my mind. Yeah. Well, then if I'm, if I'm moving then from this space of, I'm not equipped for this, but I guess I'm going to do my best and try to handle this and do like, I'm already coming from a place of failure and shame and all of this stuff. And so that's what I was carrying with me through into all of my parenting moments. And I'm like, I wonder why this is really stressful and why I don't feel like I can win. And it's because I wasn't even letting myself win. I was, I was letting fear win most often. And, and so I started thinking, you know what? No, there's an injustice here. I got mad and I'm not going to let this fear and these lies take over. And so I just started naming them, pinpointing them, and then replacing them with the truth. And so uh, for me, I went straight to the Bible and thought, you know what? I've heard the scripture a million times. Um, what he has given you, he will equip you for. And mm-hmm. so every time I, I thought, it. yeah, every time I thought, I'm not equipped for this. No, what he has given you, he will equip you for. And it took me a long time, but I don't say that in my head anymore. Not one time do I say, I'm not equipped for this. I might still fail at it, but it doesn't mean I'm not equipped for it, you know? And so it's just changing that dialogue. And so from there, it's just branching deeper and deeper and deeper because that's like a surface level lie. And there's tons of lies we believe underneath. And then it's a deep core lie that you got to get to and you got to start working on. And that's the hard, hard work, Right. but it, man, it's worth it. Well, and it's a habit you build up where you automatically start from that place of negativity and saying, I'm not equipped. And then you have to retrain your habits and your brain to be like, no, I am equipped from this. And it made me laugh yeah. when you said, you know, I even have to name it. I've heard of people naming that inner voice, something in their head, like, no, Karen, I am right. equipped. <laughs> it's always Karen. <laughs> no, Karen. <laughs> right. Oh, poor the, to poor the Karen's Karen. in the world. I know. She can't catch a break, but. <laughs> but it makes it more real. But it makes it more real. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yep. I love that. I love that. Well, we're recording this while we're still undergoing this pandemic quarantine time, which kind of reframes motherhood and a whole different version right now because we're helping our kids e-learn. You know, we're having to give ourselves grace because you're like, okay, I'm going to be on conference calls all day for work. So you're on technology all day. That's okay. That's fine. Like, they'll be okay. 
And then when I say it's fine, it really is fine. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It, I know for me right now, like funny memes and other moms in my group are kind of saving my life right now. And yeah. what would you say is, you know, kind of saving your life right now? Because it's such an emotional roller coaster right now. Yeah. Um, for me, it's been um, one, I've really gotten to know myself and uh, especially during quarantine. I've realized if I'm not like, I need personal space. I'm an introvert. And right now I'm like, I don't get any of it, but I'm like, if I don't make it for myself, no one's going to come and offer me, you know, even my husband who is wonderful. Like he's not going to come and be like, honey, do you need an hour? I've noticed the kids climbing on you. Do you need an hour? Yeah, I need 17 hours. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Oh, but wait, where am I going to go? No, right. nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. And so it's like, I've been, um, now that the weather's a little nicer too, I've been um, just saying, this is what I need. I need a morning run. I need this space. And when I run, I listen to worship music. And anytime I get any alone time, even if I'm cleaning after the kids go to bed or whatever, I'm listening to worship music because it's the quickest thing that connects me to God. I feel peaceful and I feel like it's just an easier way to to become myself more and relax and worship and so um that's been I think what's really saved me is the this is what I need this is a non-negotiable thing I can work around your conference calls too and we can figure this out I can be flexible in it but if I don't get it I'm not gonna be a very nice person so <laughs> just kind of taking it you know because like I said no one's coming to me offering to create some space for me. Well, and asking for, I think we put so much on our plates that it's just so full and then we're spinning all the plates and they're all falling and breaking. And you're like, I don't feel like I'm being the best mom. I'm not being the best employee. I'm not putting enough time into my community or whatever. Yeah. And everything just fails. I mean, there's so much beauty and power in asking for help or just that little time. And your partner's not going to be like, no. Right. Could, could. <laughs> they want you to be happy. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. And if they do say that, it's, it wouldn't be, I mean, that has happened before. Sure. But it's like, if you either have to fight for it and, and say like in vulnerability, no, here's... Oh, let me rephrase. Here's why I need this. You know, mm -hmm. you might have to open up your heart a little bit and say some stuff like that because if they don't understand, they don't understand. Yeah. Um, but you can help them. You yeah. know, Lisa, where can everyone connect with you online and learn a little bit more about I am mother of the year? All right. So it's at I am mother of the year.com. And uh, there's a Facebook group that it's connected to. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but the link is online or you can search Facebook. So there's a page you can follow. There's a group you can join. I recommend the group um, because that's where the community is. But I also, I write every week. And so I uh, always love when people join my email list. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so right now I've got uh, six ways to crush the quarantine as a free giveaway for, um, for joining my email list. So that's, uh, that's a fun, fun resource that I came up with, but uh, yeah, but that's basically where you can find me for now. And then, and then who knows, quarantine might just have me just blossoming into maybe a podcaster or a, yeah. you know, an author of Facebook live or you just never know. You never know. You <laughs> never know. And can they find the stickers on the website as well? Yeah. So there's uh, the mother of the year stickers are on the website and um, I sell a journal. It's a guided journal called what's true about you. And so that is um, kind of takes you through the process of what we talked about earlier uh, as far as replacing the lies with the truth. And um, in that are 10 of the most beautiful, and I can say this, I did not paint them, but they're <laughs> watercolored, hand-lettered um, truths about who you are and who God is. It's full of scripture. There's stories from women ages 13 through empty nester about the lies they believe and the truth about who they are. And so all of it is meant to be just a jumping off point for you to just start getting curious about um, what lies you might be believing and how they're impacting your life. And then um, I sell the, just the art pieces because I'm a, like a post-it note girl. You know, I like the stuff stuck everywhere. Yeah. And so these are in replacement of the post-it notes, but they're just the, the note cards 
for all of the scriptures and the truths. So that's been helpful too in quarantine, especially to look around and go, oh, yep, I'm seen and known. Yep, he's fighting my battles, right? Oh, yep, his mercies are new every morning. You know, all of those things are really helpful to just look around and see, and they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Well, Lisa, you are equipping women to be their best selves and lift each other up, which I think is so important, not only now, but always and through all seasons of motherhood as well. So thank you so much for this conversation. I so appreciate it. I know it's going to inspire a lot of other mamas listening in. I hope so. Lisa, I had so much fun talking to you. Like we said a couple of times to each other, we could have talked for hours. (laughs) hours. <laughs> I can't wait till the quarantine's over. You and I need to do coffee together for sure. So I think laughter is such a great key element <laughs> to self-care. And Lisa and I did a lot of laughing together. So thank you for that, Lisa. I left that conversation just feeling really overjoyed. So let's talk about my three biggest takeaways from this conversation with Lisa. Number one, you are more than just a mom. Let me say it again. You are more than just a mom. Being a mom is a really hard job. It's really, really hard. And it can be so over-consuming and overwhelming that you can get buried underneath that title of being a mom that you lose your own sense of identity. And like Lisa mentioned in in the episode, She's modeling to her kids that she is more than a mom. She's chasing after her goals. She's working hard. She's doing things that she's passionate about. She's making time for herself and self-care. You are more than a mom. A mom is a very important job, but like I said before, it's so time-consuming and overwhelming that you just can't lose your sense of who you are. And I get it. Like I mentioned I lost my sense of who I was for quite a few years before um, I finally just ventured into my own self-care journey, really, back in 2015. The past five years have been a journey for me and customizing my own self-care routine to make me feel my best. And, you know, a big part of my identity that was missing was the community around me. And that's something so great that Lisa has done through I Am Mother of the Year. I'll make sure to include a link to the Facebook group and the show notes so you can join as well and help spread some random acts of kindness and just laugh with other moms as well because who are we kidding? Motherhood has lots and lots of laughs for sure, for sure. But community, is it's a key part that I teach in my self-care coaching as well as how to build a sense of community and a tribe around you. And Lisa has done such an amazing job doing that. We rise by lifting others up and having a community around you. And that's that's a part of your identity as well. Don't lose that just because you became a mom. Keep people close to you and be open to making new relationships in order to be the best version of you. We crave community. It's a big part of who we are. Don't lose it. Number two lose the negative self-talk. We've talked about this numerous times in numerous ways here on the show in previous episodes, but Lisa has a really great journal you can find online that helps reverse the script you're telling yourself. But like we mentioned, this is a new habit you need to build for yourself. So when you're finding yourself saying you're not equipped, flip the script and say, I can handle this. I can do hard things. You have to build this new habit for yourself. Like I said, name it if you want to. Name it Karen. Poor Karen. I'm sorry if you're a Karen. Oh, she always gets the negative. Come on, Karen. (laughs) But flip the script. Name it if you have to. And start building a new habit of positive self-talk in your life. Even writing it down is so powerful. So even just get like a scrap pad of paper. I mean, I know I have a lot of few spiral notebooks here because my kids brought all home <laughs> some supplies from school that, you know, ah, they're not really using right now. So I'm using that to write out my thoughts and feelings. And it's so therapeutic and a great way for you to build a more positive self-love routine, which ultimately will lead to you feeling your best. And lastly, there is no shame in asking for help. 
We've talked about this before too. And the important thing you need to remember when you need to ask for help or tell people what you need as far as your own self-care is to tell them why. Okay. If you come at your spouse and you're like, oh my gosh, the kids are driving me crazy. You're on calls all day. I need some time to myself. I don't think that's going to go over really well. However, if you were to go to your partner and be like, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I know I'm going to be able to show up better for everyone in my life. If I get an hour to do this or that, can we make it work today? More than likely they're going to say yes and find a way to make it work. Okay. We, as women and as moms, we, I get it. We take on so much. There's such a mental load on what we're doing right now. Um, you know, I was just talking about this with my girlfriends yesterday. I can't tell you how many times I went to do something since this whole pandemic has started. My kids have been at home while I work at home and I totally forgot what I was getting ready to do. <laughs> Do you guys feel like that too? It's because we have such a mental load on us right now. Our minds are going a million miles per hour and you have to ask for help. You know, my husband's in, he works in agriculture, so he's deemed essential right now. And he's been, so he's been going to work every day, which has been great. But when he gets home, he's been so great to be like, what can I do? I'm just going to take the kids outside and we're going to do this so you can have some time to yourself. I think from our relationship, he knows when I've been stretched to the max capacity as far as working mom goes. And he's been really great at doing that. But I don't feel uncomfortable that I, that I couldn't ask him for help or what I needed. And it's because over time we've just developed that um, rapport in a relationship where I can ask for help or tell him what I need. And every single time he's like, whatever you need, babe. So ask for help. You have a big mental load on your mind right now, maybe even on your heart. Ask for help, tell them why, and <laughs> reap the benefits. Okay? Okay. So again, you can connect with Lisa and her I Am Mother of the Year Facebook community in the show notes. Lisa, thank you so much again for the conversation, for the laughter. I really enjoyed our conversation together. I think it's so needed and a great reminder for all the moms out there that they can put themselves first. They absolutely can give themselves a little bit of grace and a little bit of self-care as well, which goes a long way. So if you're loving this show, please leave me a rating and review in iTunes. It makes it so much easier for people to find the show. And make sure to connect with me online over on Instagram at Emily Nichols22 and at Self Care Isn't Selfish Podcast. You see a lot of behind the scenes peaks of what I'm doing during the quarantine and as well as some self-care tips in regards to health, fitness, community, meditation, all the things, and some fun TikTok videos rounded out in there because <laughs> why not? I'm a TikTok mom now. I'm like hashtag over 30, hashtag TikTok mom, and it's just hilarious all the moms that are on TikTok right now. It's a really great way to have some laughter throughout the day, which I mentioned earlier is a great form of self-care. So thank you again so much for listening. Happy Mother's Day again to all of the moms out there, especially to my mama and mother-in-law and all the other wonderful moms that I love in my life. So thanks again for listening, gang. See you next week. Bye.